five live. Your call. Are speech impediments a laughing matter? The Sun says this morning critics of its wing on the UO's front page, which mocked Roy Hodgson yesterday, have suffered a sense of humour failure. Speech therapist Claire Mitchell still doesn't think it was funny. She's worried this type of ridicule can lead to bullying. I think the implications for children in the playground who may end up being singled out because of the way they talk, I think it's really troubling. But journalist Piers Hernu told us earlier it's a bit of Mickey taking, it's healthy. It is part and part of the rough and tumble of, of growing up that you have to sort of learn to develop something of a, of a skin because it prepares you for real life where, you know, not everybody is quite charming to each other on a daily basis. Is it okay to tease people about their lisp, stutter, the way they pronounce their R's, or is it just not funny? Our speech impediments are laughing matter. Tell us. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. So, our speech impediments are laughing matter. The Sun defends its headline of yesterday, this morning, saying everyone should calm down, and uh, they uh, bring on Jonathan Ross to defend it. He says he didn't quite defend it, but uh, the headline today, Wassy, uh, Roy Rao is ruddy ridiculous. Uh, is that uh, pronouncing an R as a W? Is it even a speech impediment or is it a, just an idi idiosyncrasy? What about other speech impediments? Um, let's examine whether they are fair game for comedy. Is this funny? I saw it going off the rails. It all started when we had be 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 It's no good. You know I can't understand Morse code. <laughs> I'm trying to say baby be 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 too. What about this? Only fools and horses. What about this? People of Jerusalem! Rome is your friend! <laughs> to prove our friendship, it is customary at this time to release a wanderer from our prison. <laughs> Tony Jameson's a comedian. We've got Lise Geddes as well. Great to have Lise back on the programme, uh, chair of the British Stammering Association. Morning, Lise. Morning, Tony. We've got Gemma on the phone. Tony, are we getting our knickers in a twist unnecessarily here? Um, I think a little bit. I think a little bit. I mean, I think it's obviously been blown out of proportion. Um, I mean, yes, you know, obviously the, the Sun have obviously done the first thing and just sort of poked fun straight away at, 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 uh, at Roy's speech impediment. But I think the, a lot of people have obviously got their back up about it. But the problem that I have with it is that a lot of people who maybe read the headline or maybe haven't read the headline and, and are commenting on the story um, may well have, have received sort of similar style joke texts or, or similar tweets um, when the story was breaking anyway and have just went along with it and just went, oh, that's fine, that's fine. And now it's out in the public eye. Um, you know, the son have got a bit of a responsibility to the public and, you know, they should really know better. But I think that ultimately, I mean, you know, it's not that offensive, surely. What about that Python sketch there? I thought I mean, the others, oh, I don't know, but the Python one, there was something about it. It was something about the fact that it was a man in power, it was Roman emperor, there was a different context to it. It seemed to me to be okay. Um, what did you think? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think the whole the whole thing with, with comedy, obviously, is, is finding a comic value in in anything, really. And I mean, it, it's easy it's easy for for people who do comedy to to find something that's slightly different to what they've got, and you you then emphasise on that. I mean, obviously, the the South Park sketch as well with the with Kim Jong Il in uh, into America. You know, a lot of people sort of when that came out, you know, everyone thought, oh, that's really really funny, really funny. Essentially, it's the same sort of style uh, gag, essentially. And I'm sure you'll hear a lot worse in, in comedy clubs up and down the country over a weekend that L people will still laugh at. Yeah, Lise, what do you think? Um, well, um, I don't think... Um, it, I just kind of think that the article they had today uh, and the sort of uh, the explanation from Jonathan Ross uh, was, n was not... Correct in a way because I mean he is not exactly uh, known for the tactfulness of his his humour, um, and also I think he, it's not the same because he is a celebrity and he's the kind of guy who is accustomed to having to uh, to attack and to defend it in. It, it, 
how he presents himself on screen and on the radio. And that is completely unlike a small uh, a child who is completely defenseless. And the important thing about it is that if you do have that kind of speech, then you are not inclined to argue. So if somebody accuses you of a thing and they put you down, it's very hard to fight back. At least when you appeared before on this program, we got lots of callers from people with stammerers. It was an amazing hour, and I think you felt it did a lot of good as well. But but yes. but but um, it, would you classify somebody pronouncing their R's as W's as a, as a speech impediment? Would you, you see, is it the same well, thing? Uh, um, it isn't an impediment. It all depends. Uh, your understanding of the word. It isn't actually holding you up or anything. So, in, it, 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 in the travelling sort of sense, it isn't an, uh, an impediment. It, it, it isn't extra baggage, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Or, or, or perhaps it is. But then um, th there are about. I think there's something like 4.2 or 4.5 million people who have some kind of problem. Uh, with their speech, and that will stretch from they can't uh, pronounce their R's uh, through to sort of uh, Stephen Hawking, um, who isn't able, uh, <laughs> able to talk at all. Mm. And within that group, within that massive span of um, of people, you will have people who have a stammer, some of whom are hardly held up at all, and you have others who are close to speechless. Well, I'll tell you what, we will, let's hear from people in those situations, yeah. let's hear from people with, the, with, the, with, with problems, they feel they've got problems with their speech and how it's affected you and how people react to you as well, whether it does uh, draw you back and whether you feel that, that public, um, some would say ridicule's too strong a word, but, you know, d d gently poking, some would say that's too light a word, but the, the kind of headline we saw yesterday in The Sun, is that damaging? Well, Gemma's called us, you're a mum. Nikki. Hi, Gemma. Yeah, I'm a mother of two young people with speech impairments, and they have what's known as verbal dyspraxia, which means they might miss off the beginnings of words or the ends of words. And, yeah, OK, some people might think it's funny, an easy, an easy target of speech impairments, but it's not, because communication affects you in every sphere of life, social, education, work, whatever. And certainly my daughter, I think, has had problems because of her speech. She's been bullied because people have... She's misinterpreted people because she can't fight back and explain what she means, so people make fun of what she says. And I've, I've seen that, you know, that they've been reluctant to say things because they don't want to be, appear to be um, thick or stupid because when people have a speech impairment, and you're talking about one in ten children has got a speech impairment, that's a heck of a lot of children out there who need help with speech impairments. Yes, it's okay. Some things you probably can have a, um, develop a hard skin about. But when you've got a speech impairment, which you're going to use every day in every situation, it's a bit difficult to do that because you're going, you don't know who you're going to be facing. If someone's got... We don't make... We shouldn't make fun of people with their... Um, because of their skin colour or their religion, so why should we have to pick on people who've got a disability? No, um, there's a huge debate as to whether we should be able to um, make fun of people because of their religion, uh, because people think we should be able to make fun of religion, but that's another debate. It's, interesting. Yeah. it's all fascinating. Would you rather we said impairment? Um, maybe we've been saying impediment wrongly. Maybe, is impairment better? I think impairment's better because mm. I, I don't know what Len thinks, but I would think impairment is better because it it covers. I prefer it. At least you prefer impairment, yeah? I prefer it, yes. Mm. Yeah. Impediment's a heavy word. Yeah, fair enough, point taken. Yeah. Some texters are saying that as well. Yeah. Our, our apologies for that. Alan. No, it's all right. Alan, good morning. Good morning. In Belfast. Yeah, the Sun headline, was that all right? Well, I don't think it was. Um, I don't normally buy the sun or read the sun, uh, but, you know, following the discussion from yesterday onwards, um, I did. And I think in the article it, it mentioned that Roy Hodgson was affectionately known as Woy. Um, I'm a football fan, have been for years and years, and obviously Roy Hodgson has been around for a long time. And I've come across them, you know, in different guises with different clubs and different teams and whatever. And I have never, ever heard them called or referred to as Woy. And I, I don't know 
who would call him that or who does call him that. And I think I think the Sun have used that to try and justify, you know, an article and a headline that was in particularly bad taste and, you know, in in some way, um so the subtext to me is, you know, the FA didn't appoint the right man and this is the start of, you know, what will ultimately end up with, you know, the Graham Taylor scenario with the turn up head and well, it won't you know, now. all that sort of stuff. I'm sure it won't now because of uh, well, the... It, well, maybe it won't, mm. but, you know, who knows? I mean, you, you would have said on Sunday night they wouldn't have they wouldn't have printed a headline like they did yesterday, but, you know, they did. But for some people it's just not... Uh, what did you think, Joe, Tony Jameson, actually of that headline yesterday? Um, Again, I mean, I, I, I agree with, with, with your callers and your correspondents. I, I do think that it's, it's, um, it's, it's lazy journalism, uh, in, in my opinion. Um, I think, obviously, the Sun try and portray themselves, and I'm, I'm not a Sun reader any, either. Um, they try and portray themselves well, as very... millions of people are, so let's hear from people, yeah, someone who thinks... The, the wing on the Euros, is that offensive? Yeah. Um, I just, I, Tony, Tony, is that offensive? Um... I can see how it would be taken as offensive, um, and obviously, you know, it, I think that this, the, the the thing that the Sun needed to look at is if they're going to make fun of Roy Hodgson to not pick on on the obvious target that he has an impairment. I think that's a little bit harsh and a little bit unfair. Uh, if they're going to pick on him for something, pick on it for something else, you know. And I think that's what they should have done, rather than focusing on what I see as the easiest target and a, and a very unfair target as well. I'm well, thinking. we'll see. Some not everyone agrees. Let's see what people say about this. More from Lisa. Are you going to say? Some in a minute. I'm going to come back yep. in a second. Alan, you've got more to say. I know that. Gemma, thanks for your call. Your call. At least you wanted to come back and uh, make another point. Yes, You'll I have... just, yeah, I just want to say, I think the key phrase in the article they had in the Sun yesterday was that one about Hodgson, affectionately known as Woy. Mm. Now, I reckon if anyone went up to Hodgson and said, hi, how are you? How are you? <laughs> Boy, he'd be insulted by that. And so, therefore, I don't think it is affectionate. I think they've taken that word and used it in order to excuse all that other stuff. Football is full of banter, though, isn't it? It is, and that's why they said that uh, Hodgson was a broadsheet man in a... Tabloid world. Tabloid world, yep. Yeah, mm. you interrupted me there, Nicky. Um, yeah, and um, yes, but it is. But, but then what has happened here? I think the majority of that article has been written by the guy who does their sport, right? But the stuff on the front page has been written for a broader audience. And therefore, it's not only aiming at the people who, who are into football. It's <laughs> aiming at a larger audience. But I don't know. And anyway, there's been fantastic hoo-ha about, you know, is there too much, um, uh, you, you, you know, are things being said on the terraces or even in the seats that oughtn't to be said? Mm. And so I don't think you can uh, uh, accept that you know, it happens on the terraces and hence it's okay to have it on your front page. That ain't the same thing. Mm. Even if it is supposedly a... F <laughs> A family game, ha ha. Mm. Family game, ha ha. Yeah. Will Williams in Bridge D Dr. David Ward's there as well in Berkshire. Hello, William. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. David Ward, Dr. David Ward, speech language therapist, has called us. Hello, David, if I may call you that. Good morning. You may indeed. Hi, Nikki. Uh, William, your point. My point is that if it's funny, it's funny. The Dow Boy <laughs> thing with, him, with, with the quiet was funny. It was hilarious. And I don't. If it's funny, it's funny. I'm an old ugly get, right? If people want to get, if people want to laugh about that, that's fine. There's not enough laughter in the world as it is. Everybody's so serious about things. Lighten up. It's funny. What is funny is funny. It's like the the, the, the Jewish guy in the synagogue throwing the collection up into the air. What stays up is is what comes down is mine. It is funny, irrespective of what goes on. It's funny. It's not funny, though. <laughs> it is funny. It's hilarious. If you, I bet you, if for one hour every day you had a stammer and you could not speak fluently, express yourself or assert yourself, you would change your mind very quickly. I don't think I would. Well, what we don't know. Funny, it's hypothetical, it, I grant you. 
What is funny is funny. It doesn't matter what it is. If it's yes. funny, it's funny. But the point is, it isn't here, though. It isn't a joke here. It isn't a good joke. If it had been a good joke, I'd be laughing. I'm a human being as well. I understand that. We laugh about having a stammer if the joke's a good one. But this is a bad joke. It but isn't it's even not a joke. bad joke. It's just funny. Hmm. It's just a, it is funny. Well, we're all entitled uh, to our uh, well, view. It, that's the problem with it. It's not enough laughter in the world. Everybody's no, so serious, serious all the time. I'm happy to laugh, but I'd like to laugh at things that are worth. Mm, well, you at. don't think the Dow Boy thing was funny then? You don't think that's funny? You have no sense of humour. If you don't think that's funny, you don't have a sense of humour. No, I haven't argued over that at all. Well, that's was that the quieting? Was that the karaoke? Was that singing quieting? Was that the thing? Yes, yeah. in that context, that is funny. Well, that's, you see, that, that depends from your viewpoint, because if you cannot speak like everyone else, then what you tend to see, that when you see on TV programmes, things on the radio, what the scriptwriter has done, he has decided to give the person who is doing that part a stammer or whatever it is, or a lisp, in order to bring them down slightly, to diminish them. Well, no, that's, that's exactly not, what... A, if you want to go along with that philosophy, that's fine, but it's not really the case. He's, he's creating something that is funny. What about yeah. the Python thing, Lee? then, bringing down somebody who it, it, is it's, it's, not it's, weak, but is strong, and is I the know. emperor of Rome? Well, it, that's, that's, uh, uh, I don't know. That's extremely hard, because mm. I, uh, you know, I'm afraid to say I had a smile on the edge of my lips. So did I. I. <laughs> I because it was that, it's that English or you, you know thing you kind of have. There's a person behaving in a very smart way indeed, and he's flawed. So we'll have a laugh at him, okay? And that that is it's a cruel thing. Uh, but, but it's attacking we, the mighty. It's attacking it the powerful. It's bringing them down. Yeah, yes. Doctor Ward. Doctor Ward. So, sorry, it's Doctor Ward. Let's. Uh, we, I introduced him. He hasn't come in. I'm sure you've got plenty to say. Um, yeah, well, basically I can identify, not that I have a stammer, but I do have a, um, a clutter which is kind of related to a stammer. What's that um, then? What's, can, what's, um, a, what's a clutter? <laughs> um, it's, it's something I'm trying hard to control right now. It's a speech impediment um, uh, related to very fast speech rate, overly rapid speech rate words which are jumbled together sometimes. Mm. Um, but really, I didn't want to kind of go off too much of a tangent on that, but just to say I can certainly identify, I see a lot of people in my clinics, uh, people who have stammers. It's my primary focus, in fact. So I can very much identify with what the, the person who stammered uh, was saying just a second ago, and I'm sorry, I missed the beginning of the conversation, so I wasn't sure who that, who that person was. Um, but my, my point really was... Um, there's a slight difference. This, um, uh, the, the difference between the sounds that Jonathan Ross makes when he produces an R and the sound that Roy Hodgson makes when he does his R sounds. Um, so for Jonathan Ross, it's a, the, the, the two lips are kind of doing the work there. So it's more like a W, as, as people are kind of pointing out. Yeah. When Roy Hodgson does it, it's um, the lip and the... Um, and the teeth that, that come together or are approximated. Um, and you might think, well, hang on, does this really, does this really matter? That it might be a point of significance simply because what Roy Hodgson does is actually a natural dialectal variant in some um, accents of English. So, for example, in um, East End accents, you listen to East Enders, many of the, um, the actors uh, and many people obviously from the East End as well, real people, uh, real, real, um, uh, real speakers of that accent, will use their R sound. So for those people, it's not an impediment at all. It's just the natural way of speaking. I know a number of people also who have the, the so-called labiodental R, which is what mm. Roy Hodgson has, um, labial as in lip and dental as in teeth. And um, for many of those, it's not a problem at all. For some, it is. There's no question. And I know some kids who've grown up with that are um, and have been teased and have felt kind of sort of damaged by that. I do think, though, um, that it, from the NHS perspective, it's different to a stammer in that stammering is taken very, very seriously um, um, by the NHS and it, um, there's very good success rates for... Uh, for treatment of stammering if it can be caught early enough. Yep. And there's plenty that can be done even in, uh, later in life as well. Um, but with um, our variant sounds, they tend to kind of go right to the back of the queue when it comes to NHS um, mm. caseloads, simply because the pressure is on us so much to treat um, uh, disorders which may be more lasting and more damaging. And plenty of people um, have um, DVR sounds when they um, start off 
speaking and kids often grow out of it and sometimes they need some help with speech and language therapy. Mm. Um, but I think it's a slightly different issue to uh, a stammer, which I think can definitely be regarded as an impediment. Though and Lise is with us, of course. And Lise, I feel terrible about something from a couple of minutes ago when you mm. said, I really do feel bad about it because it's a, the classic thing that is really terrible to do and someone's got a stammer and, and you said... Um, you were describing Roy Hodgson as a, a broadsheet man, and I went in a tabloid, a tabloid world. world yeah. But I would have. The thing is, I, I do feel. But, but I would I have mean, done that if anyone yeah. had said that. I would. Have, I, I mean, was kind yeah. of joining in with you. I right? understand because I understand yeah. how it is for you and how you have to hurry everything. When along. I wasn't hurrying you on, even I was just. No. I was joining in with you to to, to mm. sort of acknowledge the quote. Yeah. Um, a kind but, of empathy. I know that. Mm. Yes. I know. No, it, but it's interesting, though, because mm. it, it, there is a temptation to do that. I mean, there's the same thing. If you see a person who is blind and they're hoping to cross the road, you, you help them across, or you feel you should do. But when a person is staring, you, you, know, you think you help them uh, uh, by filling in the world, and they're often, you know, they're often angry about that, saying, no, I'm going to complete this thing. Will you clear off, please? <laughs> But I wasn't thinking about that. I was thinking about if anyone had said it, if Henry Winter had come on and said it, the yeah, man who yeah. coined the phrase originally, he said, I, yeah. if he had said he's, he's a broadsheet man, I would have gone in a tabloid oh, world. No, yeah. So it was actually, no. oh, you know, it, I'm sorry. It was a cheap opportunity I took there. Not at all, Lise. <laughs> <laughs> it, but it's fascinating. It's it's interesting. We need to, we need to. What is that, William? Back? Yeah. The point is, it's still funny. What's funny? Hello. Just look, it's, it's comedy. Are you back to Del Boy or what? What, what, you, what? what about only f um, uh, open all hours? Was that funny? Yeah, that's. A, I find that funny. Right, well. at least get us. Yeah, I, 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 again, I think the thing that, that sort of is my, my view on that is, again, they've, they, he's a slightly proud, awkward man. He's a bit, you know, sort of full of himself. And somebody's probably said, we'll give him a stammer just to bring him down a notch or two. So I'm not so happy yeah, over the that, principle. That's, that's, wait, that's I'm not comedy, at the end. That's You're interrupting comedy. me. Wait, you hang on. Uh, but the, I did think that that one about, you know, are you a machine kind of, uh, you know, I don't understand Morse code was uh, good joke though in a sense, it was. Listen, yeah. I have to hurry everybody along um, because we have to take the weather, but it's fascinating. Thanks for all your calls so far. Angela, I will come to you if you can wait for us. <laughs> William, it's very clear that you think it was funny. Dr. David Ward, thank you for your expertise, sir. Thank you for calling us. Please get us still with us, chair of the British Stammering Association. We're going to talk as well to... Um, so Louisa Reeves shortly, an advisor from the Child Communications Charity ICANN. And uh, Angela in Norwich has been waiting patiently. Then it's Mandy in Northern Ireland. We'll speak to Anne in Birmingham, Mark in Birmingham as well. Angela, thank you so much for hanging on. That's all right. It's all yours. My son has a, a speech impediment similar to uh, a previous caller you had whose daughter has a similar problem, um, a stammer combined with quite rapid speech. Uh, he had a, a bad time at school, but not from his peers, from his teachers who oh. regularly didn't wait long enough for him to, to start an answer in a question and answer session. Um, his class often refused to answer the next question because Tim hadn't actually had time to answer uh, and they used to give him that time to do it. But this wasn't yeah, these weren't his peers. These were his teachers. Um, and it's not funny. Speech impediments are not funny. Uh, they might be used to, to bring people down slightly, but that's not funny either. I'm a redhead, and if some brainless person likes to make a joke of that, I can cope with it. But when you're a child, you cannot cope. It goes internally, and you begin to feel that you're not worthy of anything because... As soon as you open your mouth, you struggle. And, I, you know, the best of us can laugh at, at um, programs. Uh, he laughs at uh, Monty Python. But it's, it's not funny when it continually happens to you. That's all. I'm so glad you uh, waited for us. Uh, thank you, Angela. Thank you very much. Uh, Mandy in Northern Ireland. Hello, Mandy. Whereabouts Hello, in Northern there. Ireland? That's a bit non-specific. Where are you? Uh, um, I am actually in... Um, uh, the, the, the Belfast. Belfast. Great stuff. What would you like to say? 
um, just basically that these um, things can be hilarious. Everybody thinks it's so funny, but it's only really, really funny when it isn't you or any of your um, family or your sister, you know, your brother. But if it is you, suddenly you kind of think, actually, that's not hilarious because you've maybe watched a person that, 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 that you love or you care about struggle for a lifetime with, you know, something like, like this. And it is really literally only a f- 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 funny when it isn't you. And that man that that was on, and he was saying, oh, it's hilarious, it's funny. Mm. Like I say, he doesn't have to struggle with it. He hasn't had to. And whenever um, I was uh, younger, now, I wasn't too uh, bad. I had a very good uh, group of pals, and my school was very good. But I was lucky. I was one of the very, very, very few who were able to actually grow up quite happily, quite normally, and it didn't hurt me quite as much as it has done. Um, Because it, it does... For people who have had to grow up with abuse, with a bit of, you know, teasing and all that there, it can become a huge issue in your own head. And through work that I have been doing, you see the effect on people's mental health. And it's not a joke then. It's certainly not even funny. Do you think that, Mandy, do you think that um, the... Uh, pronunciation of an R as a W qualifies mm-hmm. as a, a speech impairment. Something it's just uh, well, one of my children does it, and it's, it, I think it's, yeah. I think it's lovely. It can be very cute. Whenever <laughs> a little child is like you know mm. mixing their R's and their W's, you know that that can seem very cute. Maybe until that child reaches ten, and then all the wee kids in school start actually imitating them. It's not so cute then, it's not so funny then, whenever they've got a classroom of mates, every time they, they, they would say their name, say their name was an R, you know, and then they're saying something, and the group of kids goes into complete convulsions with laughter. Mm-hmm. It's not so funny then, whenever your child might then come home crying and saying, Daddy, why can't I speak normally? Sarah, then it becomes an impediment then. Okay, stay there, Mandy. Sarah, what would you like to say in Surrey? Good morning. Oh, good morning. Um, well, I, I totally understand um, the views of your um, previous listeners, but the point is this. That it's becoming increasingly that we can't laugh at this, we can't laugh at that. It, the world is a pretty grim place. And if we can't laugh at anything, then we're reducing it and making it even grimmer. My, I would also like to add that um, I don't, I'm not advocating laughing and being nasty at, at um, people with speech impediments or any learning difficulties. I have one myself. But don't you think we would be better off equipping our children to be able to deal with it, to have confidence and self-esteem and to tell the other children they are not stupid, they are not um, uh, ignorant, they are just different and we must accept that. If I could just actually come in there, and that is exactly what a lot of groups are actually trying to um, do. We try to um, raise our awareness saying that it is okay, you can stammer, you can have a speech impediment. But whenever a national newspaper decides to print a headline, taking the mick out of it, that kind of does so much damage to all the work that we do. Well, the thing is, um, it's not... If I could just widen it out slightly, it's not just that. There was a a, a chap on earlier on this program who was going on about how you can see someone's blind because they've got a white stick and whatever. There's also all those other things, isn't there? Like dyslexia, ADHD, autism, that aren't so obvious. No, absolutely not. But you wouldn't have a headline taking the mick out of a person with autism. That wouldn't be a joke. It's not funny. That's true. But the point is, you know, we need to equip 
the kids. We need to equip the kids. Otherwise, they're going to go through life. Well, that's what and we're... That's so what super is. sensitive that anything is going to cut them to the quick. Let's speak to and Louisa Reeves, because me. she's right on this, Sarah, and you've made that point very... Stay there. Louisa Reeves, advisor, Lisa, in a moment, too. Lu Louisa, advisor from the Child Communications Charity, I Can. First of all, was this headline over the top, or are we just really... Are we being over the top? Are people being over the top about the headline? Well, I think um, Mandy's put the case very well, actually. Um, one of the, the main difficulties that um, children and adults who have uh, any difficulty with speech, whether it's a, a disfluency or a, a speech impediment, have is that um, what happens is that people tend to listen to how they're saying it and not what they're actually saying. Um, and I think this... Um, is a bit of a case in point, really, that this story has become more about Mr. Hodgson's speech impediment than actually, um, you know, what he's going to be doing. Um, is it wrong because... to take the mickey out of someone's accent gently? Well, I think it depends on the context, doesn't it? And there's, um, there's a very fine line between, uh, you know, what one person thinks of as, as bullying and somebody else thinks of as teasing. Do you remember the Harry Enfield sketch, The Scousers? I don't know. Well, they were, they were sort of, they were, they were quick to excite, classic sort of uh, comedy scouse accents, curly hair, moustaches. Oh, yes. Yeah, all right, all right, all that calm stuff. Calm down. Calm down, yeah. exactly. Was that over the line? Well, I don't feel qualified to say because I, I, I'm not from Liverpool, so I, I can imagine that some scousers would have found that offensive, yes. But... I think when we make caricatures of, of people... But isn't know, comedy about being slightly <laughs> offensive? Yeah. Very often. This is this. Is the, Louis, uh, at least get it. It's terribly difficult, isn't it, when we come down to it? Yes, it isn't easy. But I, I think all the, that you have this underlying thing about people with a problem with their speech is that it, it, it seems, it still seems to be okay to have a go at that. Now, there are the majority of people who stammer, for instance, it happens because there is some problem or other in their neurology, and it happens when they are, say, maybe three years old or whatever it is. But then there are some people who are choir stammering because they've been hit on the head or they've had a stroke. Mm. Now, that's the same thing happening, but would you l l laugh if you knew they had had a stroke? Yeah. You know, and you don't know. You're just assuming because it's in the same way that we have a slight feeling of humour when we hear someone trying to assert themselves but not being able to do it, it brings them down. It, it, it's, you know, a thing some of us have become accustomed to and kind of enjoy. And um, it's an equaliser. And it, 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 but it, uh, it it's just, it, you, people don't understand what it is because we don't get enough time on the air. We don't get, um, uh, people cannot understand how it is when you cannot speak as you would hope to speak. You can't express yourself, you have skills, you have all these things. You cannot make proper use of them because your speech is fantastically irritating. And they don't seem to understand that. They just think, well, you know, it's a slight sort of problem. But when you've been stammering for 60 years, as I have, but it's a heavy load mm. on you and things. But it's far worse for a child because it has all those opportunities in front of it and things. And it, as soon as it feels that it's being teased by other people and it can't express itself and it's not quite sure what to do, it starts closing down. Well, do you know what? If I could come in here, this is Sarah here. Yeah. You know, hi, Sarah. Um, um, hi. Um, you know, I've listened very carefully to what you're saying. I, mm. But the trouble is, it's also negative. It's all so negative. I work with in special needs. Mm. And what I'm trying to do with the children whom I work with mm. is I'm trying to address their problems. Yeah, well, I'm And glad. I'm trying to not only address them, mm. but also to help with their um, developing their self-confidence and their self-esteem. Mm. And also talking to other members of the class about how we should treat yep. each other. Other. Great. And, and yours is, you, where you're coming from all the time is no, but how I want bad people... it is, how terrible. But well, you, you know, come on, we've got to start moving away from that. No, people and have to understand the problem. The, people you know. have to understand the problem before we can start talking about a solution. I've outlined the problem. You're doing a great job on helping people understand the solution to help bring them out of it. Now, that's great. 
Could I, could I perhaps come in there? You I can think... in a second. We're going to take the travel news and I'll come straight to you. It's 9.48. This is Five Live Breakfast. Your call. Coming up, Mark in Edinburgh, Mark in Birmingham and Craig in Oxfordshire. Lu Louisa, sorry, I had to update people on the travel. What did you want to say? Yes, well, I thought that Sarah had a very good point about um, how important it is to build up children's confidence and, and their ability to see themselves as good communicators, wh whatever their communication difficulty may be. And I think somebody like Roy Hodgson is a, a, a great example of how successful you can be. I know he has a very mild um, speech difficulty, but I think, you know, he's been very successful in his chosen career and he would be a good role model to hold up for children. But if they see him then being ridiculed for um, his speech difficulty, then, you know, that rather undermines that good work on having positive role models. Craig, hi. I'm Nicky, hi, good morning. Morning to you. Yeah, um, Nicky, I'd just like to say that, you know, I'm getting a wee bit, a wee bit uh, hacked off about these these whinge and whining people who think that because they have a, a slight impairment that, that that's the end of their world, you know? Um, just man up and get on with it because there are a lot worse things in life. You know, unfortunately, kids are cruel, and if you have a stammer or a stutter, they will magnify the fact. Now, I, I, at 16 years old, I'm five foot two and I joined the army, so you can imagine the ribbing I took. But what I did, after a wee while, I just stopped reacting altogether, and they stopped doing it. You know, that, that's the way. Just get used to it. There are more important things in life to worry about. You know, just, uh, we can't, I'm being, I'm sick of being told what I can laugh at and what I can't laugh at. You know, uh, the humour is subjective. You know, and if I find a ginger joke funny, I will laugh at it. Simple. It, as I say, I will underline and emphasise, man up and get used to it. There are far more important things to worry about. Um, anyone? Lise? Hi, um, it's, um... Oh, is that Mark? Come in here, it's Mark in Edinburgh. Yeah, go on, Mark, you respond to that, yeah, yeah. Craig's made, uh, yeah. Craig, former soldier. Hi. Yeah, yeah um, I, I actually just, uh, just wanted to make a, a point about something that I was hearing earlier. What about that point? I'm interested in that point. It's, there are more important things in life and it's a question of toughening up. Um... I think he makes a good point. I think it's um, if your personality is is like that. But I think when you're a child and you're still maturing and learning to deal with your emotions, uh, particularly during puberty, that can be really hard for, for kids. And certainly when I was at, at school as somebody who had a stammer, I didn't have access to special needs help. Some of the work that Sarah's doing with the kids sounds fantastic. Well, that wasn't available to me, um, I was quite fortunate I accessed um, speech and language therapy off my own back and I've, uh, I've actually moved on from that and gone into a successful career. Well, I, I actually just wanted to make the point about the fictional, uh, about people laughing at fictional characters and that is that okay or is that not okay? Yeah. Because I actually think it's okay to laugh at fictional characters. It's a very human thing to laugh at other people's misfortune. But the difference is, is that when we come face to face with other people's misfortunes, people want to help. But those who don't want to help and take advantage of that, those are the people that we call bullies. And I think the Sun's coverage of that yesterday, it made it seem okay to then have a pop at that. I'm quite sure Roy Hodgson, if you met him in the street, would not want to be addressed as, as Roy. Um, on yeah, that humour yeah, front, yeah. Uh, 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 on, on the humour front, I want to pick that up with Lisa in a minute, but first of all, thank you so much, Mark. First of all, let me just tell you there's been serious flooding across Suffolk this morning. Specialist water rescue teams have been called. Uh, I just wonder, um, Lee Skeddis, when we start telling people what we... Uh, whoever said uh, just a few minutes ago, it's Craig, actually, humour is subjective. There's a huge danger in telling people what they can and can't laugh at, isn't there? Mm -hmm. There is, yeah. And I, I mean, it's like that old thing of, you know, it, it, it's dangerous to tell a Jewish <laughs> joke if you're not actually Jewish. Well, mm. you know, I think almost the same applies to speech because you don't understand it. People d d don't see you have, have sufficient empathy over the thing. Um, uh, <laughs> have to be truthful to it. They think they are taking the problem that you have uh, as an opportunity 
or a cheap joke. And that's the whole point. <laughs> Phone in today is to discuss the Hodgson um, thing. And is it, is it humorous to do that or not? And it isn't, I think. Mm. Uh, Mark, yeah. in, I've got another Mark. Mark in Birmingham, hi. Hi, Nicky. Um, I've, I'm not sure I was too annoyed when I started uh, waiting, but I'll be coming a little bit more. Um, firstly, I think context is vital. Uh, I have a sight problem myself, and as a child, when sighted other children would take the mickey, it hurt. Um, as an adult, uh, I have family members who also have sight problems and I will frequently say I don't know you should you should look where you're going you blind bat or phrases like that and it, it you know and it's a joke it's funny mm. I think that there's that um, I mean, when you're a child, it's very difficult. I mean, yeah, exactly. I, 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 allow that's me to move it to Nick and Croydon while we've got time. Nick, you've, uh, you, I believe you have a stammer as well. What do you want to say, yeah. Nick? Well, firstly, I think I think uh, we should man up, as as your contact said, uh, about uh, what is a joke and what's a gentle chiding. The difference between um, uh, what is a gentle tease and what is uh, what is cruel unpleasantness is is the huge and people with I don't know, that was my experience um you need to learn to uh, to to split the two and treat them dif differently how easy is it to differentiate though because does one not sometimes lead to the other when people get false signals oh i can laugh at that you know it's it's the people saying it the way they say it the way they do it their tone their mannerism you know uh, I, sh I can't imagine that someone as successful as Roy Hodge Hodgson is would would honestly take that seriously. And, uh, and I mean, quite why we are taking it seriously on Roy's behalf is actually beyond me. We're not all victims. I've got a stammer. It is a fact of life. I've got to get on with it and not be a victim and upset when someone points out I've got a stammer. Are you old enough to remember the open all hours, Ronnie Barker? Yes, I do. Yeah. Yes, I do. There was, the, he very rarely in that um, uh, joked about the stammer, but did once, as I recall, uh, I'm not an expert on that programme, but the stammer wasn't the joke. Mm. It was yeah. part of him, and right. I thought that was great. Can I come in there, Nikki? It's Louisa from ICANN. You've got about 30 seconds. OK. Um, we see children and young people with really, really severe communication difficulties at ICANN, and it affects their emotional development, their social development, and how they um, access education, how they do in school, and their future careers. So <laughs> for them, it's not a laughing matter. There are some children and young people for whom this is not a joke. Thank you so much. You did 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> what a professional. Lise, it's always a great pleasure. Thank you for coming on this morning. It's a pleasure to be on, on your programme, and I'm extremely grateful. Well, it's, uh, your, 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 what's your website again? Um, www.stammering.org. Thank you, sir. And ours is, pleasure. ours is talkingpoint.org for any parents or young people who want more information about language difficulties. Right. A couple of websites like uh, Is that uh, pronouncing an R as a W? Is it even a speech impediment or is it a, just an idi idiosyncrasy? What about other speech impediments? Um, let's examine whether they are fair game for comedy. Is this funny? I saw it going off the rails. It all started when we had be 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 It's no good. You know I can't understand Morse code. <laughs> I'm trying to say be 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 Only fools and horses. What about this? People of Jerusalem, Rome is your friend. <laughs> to prove our friendship, it is customary at this. I think he, it's not the same because he is a celebrity and he's the kind of guy who is accustomed to having to. Uh, 
to attack and to defend it in in how he presents himself on screen and on the radio. And that is completely unlike a small child who is completely defenseless. And the important thing about it is that if you do have that kind of speech, then you are not inclined to argue. So if somebody accuses you of a thing and they put you down, it's very hard to fight back. Now, at least when you appeared before on this program, we got lots of callers from people with stammerers. It was an amazing hour, and I think you felt it did a lot of good as well. But, but, yes. but, but um, it, would you classify somebody pronouncing their R's as W's as a, as a speech impediment? Would you, you see, is it the same well, thing? Um, it isn't an impediment. It all depends uh, <laughs> your understanding of the word. It isn't actually holding you up or anything. So in, in, in the travelling sort of sense, it isn't an, uh, an impediment. It, it, it isn't extra baggage, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Or, or, or perhaps it is, but then... Um, the Life. Your call. Are speech impediments a laughing matter? The Sun says this morning critics of its wing on the UO's front page, which mocked Roy Hodgson yesterday, have suffered a sense of humour failure. Speech therapist Claire Mitchell still doesn't think it was funny. She's worried this type of ridicule can lead to bullying. I think the implications for children in the playground who may end up being singled out because of the way they talk, I think it's really troubling. But journalist Piers Hernu told us earlier it's a bit of mickey taking it's healthy it is part and part of the rough and tumble of, of growing up that you have to sort of learn to develop something of a of a skin because it prepares you for real life where you know not everybody is quite charming to each other on a daily basis is it okay to tease people about their lisp stutter the way they pronounce their r's or is it just not funny our speech impediments a laughing matter tell us this is BBC Radio 5 Live. So are speech impediments a laughing matter? The Sun defends its headline of yesterday, this morning, saying everyone should calm down, and uh, they uh, bring on Jonathan Ross to defend it. He says he didn't quite defend it, but uh, the headline today, was he? Uh, Roy Rao is ready. Time to release a wanderer from our prison. <laughs> Tony Jameson's a comedian. We've got Lise Geddes as well. Great to have Lise back on the programme, uh, ch chair of the British Stammering Association. Morning, Lise. Morning, Tony. We've got Gemma on the phone. Tony, are we getting our knickers in a twist unnecessarily here? Um, I think a little bit. I think a little bit. I mean, I think it's obviously been blown out of proportion. Um, I mean, yes, you know, obviously the, the Sun have obviously done the first thing and just sort of poked fun straight away at, 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 at Roy's speech impediment. But I think the, a lot of people have obviously got their back up about it. But the problem that I have with it is that a lot of people who maybe read the headline or maybe haven't read the headline and, and, and are commenting on the story um, may well have, have received sort of similar style joke texts or, or similar tweets um, when the story was breaking anyway and have just went along with it and just went, no, that's fine, that's fine. And now it's out in the public eye. Um, you know, the son have got a bit of a responsibility to the public and, you know, they should really know better. But I think that ultimately, I mean, you know, it's not that offensive, surely. What about that Python sketch? There? I thought I mean, the others, oh, I don't know, but the Python one, there was something about it. It was something about the fact that it was a man in power, it was a Roman emperor, there was a different context to it. It seemed to me to be okay. Um, what did you think? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think the whole the whole thing with, with comedy, obviously, is is finding a comic value in in anything, really. And I mean, it, it's easy, it's easy for for people who do comedy to to find something that's slightly different to what they've got, and you you then emphasise on that. I mean, obviously, the the South Park sketch as well with the with Kim Jong Il in uh, into America. You know, a lot of people sort of when that came out, you know, everyone thought, oh, that's really really funny, really funny. Essentially, it's the same sort of style uh, gag, essentially. And I'm sure you'll hear a lot worse in, in comedy clubs up and down the country over a weekend that L people will still laugh at. Yeah, at least. What do you think? Um, well, um, I don't think... Um, it, I just kind of think that the article they had today uh, and the sort of uh, the explanation from Jonathan Ross uh, was, n was not... W w uh, Correct in a way because I mean he is not exactly uh, known for the tactfulness of his his humour, um, and also.